Okay, so today we are here for the study skills number three by TRIO. So the first topic we're going to be going over is writing and paper. How many of you guys think that you guys are good writers? God knows I'm not. <laughs> Sometimes it just Sometimes. depends on like the topic. What would you say is like your best type of writing? Argumentative essay, like something like persuasive. Okay. For what type of class do you usually write those types of essays? Just English. Just English. What about you, Andrea? Um, I don't know. I'm using it to write evidence-based <laughs> papers. Yeah, so I have to use articles. Um, and in that case, the most of those uh, essays and papers they're geared towards showing evidence of why a certain intervention program or a certain type of medication is best used for a certain population. So the three types of papers that are the most common is one, the report or the formal essay, research papers, or creative writing. Um, in college, we do a lot less of the creative writing part, um, unless, of course, you're like an English major or something like that. But mostly for our majors downtown, it's a report or a research paper. Uh, like you were saying, yours are mostly like research-based. Uh, what's like the most recent paper you had to write? Um, well, the most recent paper I had to write was more of a creative writing for salsa, but the, right now I'm working on um, a intervention report um, for veterans. So I'm just doing my to compile a report basically on what kind of intervention we want to do for this population and how we want to do it. Um, so for a report, essays, it's mostly like informing, persuading, explaining the subject. It's usually four to five pages long. Um, you do need some evidence, but it's more opinion-based in a way. While research, it examines just one simple subject. It's usually seven to ten pages long, and you need at least ten to fifteen resources. Um, creative writing, that's more personal use plot, characters, dialogue. Um, it's more of a freestyle type of writing. Um, writing a paper, there's seven steps. Uh, the first one is to determine the type of paper it is. The second one is to choose a topic, gather information, organize your ideas, write the first draft, rethink, revise, what you write, and then write the final draft. Do you guys remember the whole going back to middle school with the writing process? Can you tell us if Why that's in high school? High school? Because they normally like tell you like whatever. Because it just depends on what they say, but like they have us to annotate articles or like on the research paper and stuff, and then like how like ways to like format it, like using evidence and then explaining and providing examples of like just the basic process of how to create an actual essay. Do you, use, do you still use the writing process or have you developed a new way of writing papers? I actually developed. <laughs> Can you guys tell me like what your new writing process is like? Probably mostly on like it's just based on like explaining, so like elaborating for more and essays. Like not just using evidence, but paraphrasing or instead of like direct or forward. Um, mine's a little bit more focused, so I started off by having an intro, body, 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 conclusion, and then I write, just I start writing my intro, and then 
I go into my body and then I write like, two sentences that are worth the background of like whatever whatever research paper I'm looking at, and then I cite it and then I get more information, and then I kind of just do that for every single paragraph until I sent to them. Um, do you usually just do like one draft, or do you have plenty of drafts before no. you get to your final? Yeah, I, I did more about drafts on the computer to make sure they are perfect with the directions. Yeah, and that is what our trio services are here for. Um, you guys can always use one of our trio tutors to revise your papers or to just simply even help with developing um, what points you want to point out in your essay. Do you have like a specific writing process that you like to use or do I know what in the papers? Mm -hmm. Decide what like the outline that the teacher wanted? Um, it can be that or like I was explaining like some people like to choose a topic from there, they kind of brainstorm, do like a spider web or something like that, and then they start writing or some others prefer to do like their body paragraphs first and then go to a conclusion and intro at the last. Um, it just really depends on the person. I was just wondering what um, you like to use. I like to go in order. I do like introduction and all that because I feel like if I don't know, like if I don't have a basic understanding, I will not be able to directly go into detail. So I go uh, introduction, body, but um, most of the time, I have an outline, which I really use. So, um, Moving on to our second topic, second and third topic, actually. How many of you guys have to do speeches and presentations? Oh, I hate those. Okay. How do you guys feel about them? Super comfortable? Super comfortable? Yeah. Um, Confident? Average. Average. It depends on guys. <laughs> so, if I were to just give you a topic right here, how comfortable from one to ten would you feel giving a presentation? Oh well. Six or seven. Six or seven. Six. Six. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of us actually are not that comfortable with giving presentations. And it's not because we don't like doing them, but it's more because we're afraid that we're going to make a mistake. Um, but essentially, that is the whole learning process. Believe me, I am terrified of being up here. However, it's with practice. This is my third or fourth presentation just this semester. So I'm getting a little bit more used to it. Um, but yeah, like you just have to understand that Mistakes happen, and all you can really do is take a deep breath and just continue on. Um, no one's perfect, and no one's really going to judge you for it. Um, so developing the speech or the presentation, you have to make sure that you're really comfortable and familiar with the topic. If you don't know what you're talking about, most of the time you're going to be really nervous. Because if someone asks you a question, you won't be able to have an answer necessarily. Um, understanding the purpose, so whether it's to inform, to persuade, or to demonstrate something. Um, sometimes you just go up and give five, ten facts in front of the whole class. Or sometimes you have to do an argumentative speech where it might be a debate between two teams. Um, or sometimes it might just even be demonstrating how to do a type of paper or how to do a criminal analysis, whatever it might be. Um, thinking about your audience. So I put three different types of audiences. The most common for us are college students. But maybe if you decide to work for a school or do your internship at a school, you'll be having to deal with a lot younger ages, which can be a little bit more difficult because 
it's, you have to keep them engaged, make sure that they're staying focused, that they're not going off track. Um, and then there's the older generations where you have to make sure it's more of a formal um, presentation where you really have to know what you're talking about. Memorizing, so practicing is the biggest thing. Um, if you go over it, there's a girl where she's practicing in front of a mirror. And for me, that tends to work a lot, just simply because I'm repeating the words constantly, constantly, until I get them down. The next one is using note cards. It's OK, especially if you're giving an hour to two hour presentation. You're not going to remember everything. You might need little hints here and there. Or using a PowerPoint, just like I am now. Um, these are just key reminders of what you need to talk about and just the information you have to hand out to the audience. Um, but essentially, you must know the information just um, as it is. And delivering, dressing up or dressing down, depending on the occasion. If like you have the first audience, which is very for, uh, formal, uh, older generations maybe, then you might want to dress in a nice dress or a nice pencil skirt with a nice blouse. If it's with little kids, might be a little bit harder to dress up. Might want to do jeans and a t-shirt or like nice dress pants, um, but a, just like a polo or something because you will might be like having to run around after them. Confidence, like Amy said, that's number one thing. It, you got to fake it so you make it, pretty much. Um, making eye contact, biggest thing. If your audience can't see your eyes, guess what? They're not going to be paying attention to you. Um, taking a deep breath. If you make a mistake, just take a deep breath. It's going to be OK. Just keep going on. And finally, just take it slow. We tend to kind of speed talk. We just kind of ramble on about things whenever we are nervous or we are scared about presenting. Um, can any of you guys tell me about like, your latest presentation? No, oh, I do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I do nutrition and education. Yeah, was old, I don't care. How did that? How did you feel about being a presentation? It wasn't like just individual, it was just group. Like, it's just based on like the research that we did, and we just explained like what's been happening like ever since, like how like nowadays, especially with the healthcare and the U.S., it's like still like up on the rise. It's like expensive. Like my one can afford it. Compared to like Canada, it's like more better. But it's just like there's there's pros and cons. So it's just that if we did the research, it's like we're explaining, but then like as of like today, you know, there's still some issues going on in the system that's not. Whether it's in college or high school? Me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, like I'm taking 
Huh? So I don't know if they looking at them. Yeah, so you're not looking just at one person because it gets kind of awkward when you're looking at one person. <laughs> so Even like, though you're really not looking at the one yeah. person, but you're so, looking at one yeah. area. Or, they think yeah, so you. when I tend to look, when I do presentations, I tend to look at farther away from, like there's a group, so that you have that side, but I'm looking towards the wall. So it makes it seem like I'm looking at everybody. And then sometimes I'll look at like specific people and they'll like nod and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> But like I tend to like split the room in like halves, so it makes it seem a little bit smaller. And then I also move my body to whatever I'm looking at, so that they are they feel like I'm engaged in a specific group. No, but that's a very good idea, and that's that's really part of presentation. Um, kind of tips that I've read up on other areas too, like in this room, the clock would be another object, and then if there was an object on either one of the sides, you do that, or you pick like a window, one of the windows over there as <coughs> your next point, and like emergency board sign here as a, a gauge, and so you're turning your head. You're still talking, all you're doing is you're just moving your head left to right. <coughs> um, but you're actually not looking at the people, which you're moving your head left to right, it, it makes the perception as you are looking at your audience, but you really are not. <clears throat> You're still concentrating on what you want to say. <laughs>